On this week's Vaticano, we give you a never-before-seen insight into the Vatican's photo archive. Follow the Pope's photographers on their daily routine and visit the archive in the workshop where everyday papal history is recorded and stored. Learn about the graces, peculiarities, and challenges of this unique office of the Vatican and see some never-before-seen footage of events and private papal activities. All this and see how a new exhibition in Rome introduces the spectator to another type of memory recording, painting. For this, stay tuned, now on Vaticano. Across history, the human being has made use of different tools to leave traces of his footprint on this world. The photograph is one. Thanks to the photographic image, today we are witnesses to events that have marked the history of recent centuries. Since 1933, the Holy See has been documenting the life of the pontiffs through photos. And the Vatican office in charge of this mission is called the Osservatorio Romanos Photographic Service. Its director, Father Sergio Pellini, knows the origins of the archives very well. This type of service was born like this, a bit spontaneously. Let's talk about the first important person. We can say it like that. The founder of this institution was Signor Giordani Francesco, who did first autonomously and then step by step, closer in collaboration with the Holy See, the photography. And he made the photos of the Holy Father, available precisely as a service for the Holy See. We are in the 30s when this activity officially took off as a photographic service, as agency one might say, which received its structure in the 70s. Concretely, in 1977, we began to officially distribute and reproduce the photographs, not just on a national level, but also internationally. In each photo, the photographic service seeks to bring the figure of the successor of Peter to the entire world. Our work is a work in the service of the Holy Father, to make his mission more visible and the values that go along with the image, the meetings and the conferences. Every year is being documented and archived, since it remains in the memory with its ideas, the people and the places. Sometimes the photos, we might say, are a little bit bizarre. But in the selection of the photos, we always try to sort the images out well, so that nobody can misinterpret an attitude or even a mode of positioning oneself. Quality is a priority in the photography services work. To obtain a high quality harmony between the different elements that compose the photograph is essential. La qualità non è soltanto fare una bella fotografia nitida con dei bei colori. The goal is not just to shoot a beautiful photograph with its pretty colors, but everything that goes into that photograph, the elements, our gestures, the details, the together of all the elements, of its context in which the photos are made up and how it is presented to the public later. 
questi tre fotografi. The three photographers that accompany the Holy Father always on his pastoral visits, on his apostolic journeys and during his events in the Vatican City are given accurate instructions and orientations based on the indications that are given by the Holy Father himself. We have photographs which are unedited since they're images of private encounters. They serve as documents but are reserved and secret. Other photos are made public. After a little bit of time, not immediately, depending on the occasion and the necessities of the moment. Despite its close link to the Osservatorio Romano, the Holy See's newspaper, the photography service works as a separate entity. Today the photographic service serves the publication Osservatore Romano only in a small aspect because we are connected to a variety of agencies like ANSA and Reuters who have a direct link to the photographic service and they in turn link to multiple other agencies. For Father Sergio Pellini, the secret to capturing a good photograph depends on two factors. In the first place, the spontaneity that comes forth from the photograph. There are thousands of photos that document this spontaneity, not just formal meetings. Second, the encounter of poverty in our world. Speaking of the sick, the poor, also the least valued and the children. These are always scenes that trigger tenderness, affection and a desire to give hope through presence, through signs as well as through a smile. Located within the Vatican walls, the L'Osservatorio Romano's photography service counts on the work of a team of photographers, archivists and information technicians. Each of them work in service to the image of the Holy Father from the moment the photo is taken to their archiving, conservation and distribution. Marco Tassi is the coordinator of the photography service. He's going to take us along for a day in the life of the office. The day of a photographer is marked by the agenda of the Holy Father, but not only, but also by the events of the Roman Curia, the Secretariat of State and other secretaries. Any event, really, that the Secretariat of State requests a photographic documentation for. But the great majority of events are moments with the Holy Father. Especially the audiences on Wednesdays are very, very, very laborious, to follow the Pope with the faithful, they want to embrace him, they want to greet him. And to document all of that is a pretty difficult work. But we have photographers who can rise to the task. Working beside the Pope and capturing high-quality photographs without being an obstacle at the event one is covering is not an easy task. And it's for this reason that the photographer that accompanies the Pope must find the right balance and act with extreme professionalism. The photographer must be most of all a person that can document, that can do his job with discretion. The special task of the photographer of the Vatican is his discretion. He must be one part with the room and photograph everything very quietly and in respect with the total trust of the Holy Father. It is the Holy Father himself who gave us to understand that he likes our photographers very much. When an event ends, the photographers head to the photo service where the second phase in the process begins. In the moment in which the photographer comes back, he leaves all the photos of the events here and they are being looked at, they get edited a bit and then they enter the archive. In the photographic laboratory they're renamed and finally they're put on display for the public in a reduced form with a watermark on the file so they can be browsed through in our shop.
In addition to the creation of a digital archive, every photograph is printed and archived. We print them in different media in different formats, about 200,000 photos a month. First, the photos were not scanned, but only the negatives were kept. Now, all the scans are being made, also of the audience or any other event of the Holy Father. Everything gets scanned, printed or archived, also in paper form. But wouldn't all of these copies be a major burden on the environment? Mr. Tassi says the archive was created to be environmentally friendly. Photos are developed with the help of our colleagues, people that are specialized in this kind of work, and also with the help of this machine, which works with all the necessary chemicals. We have reduced these products greatly in recent years. We have made changes, which have given us the possibility to reduce almost a third of the number of liters which are used to develop the photos. And that gives us the possibility to help the environment and reduce our waste. Since 2006, with the arrival of the digital era, the world of photography has completely abandoned the analog format. And it's exactly the digitalization of photography that's the main driver of an exponential increase in the office's production. There are around 20 terabyte of photos. That means there are about 4 to 5 million digital photographs overall. Currently, the photography service is also facing another challenge, digitizing all of its historical patrimony which hasn't yet been touched. There are literally millions of negatives that are now vulnerable, priceless photos that risk being lost. We are here in an air-conditioned room where we preserve all the negatives. The main important thing is that these negatives should be digitalized to make them clearer. Some are already yellow and others are broken. If we do not manage to digitalize them, these photos will be lost. On the other hand, if we do manage to digitalize them, then we will bring to life photos never seen before. These photos are conserved in this room with air conditioning and the boxes of carton. The boxes already deteriorate and it has become quite urgent to start digitalizing them as soon as possible. These negatives are from 1933 all from the era of Giordano, who covered the whole pontificate of Pi XII, some parts of Pi XI, and all of Pi XII. We find ourselves in a place here where for many years have been archived about 6 million photo negatives. So that is in film of all that we have here upstairs in paper. They are conserved in this part since there is constant air conditioning of 16 degrees Celsius. So we also have the negatives here of the pontiffs from the year 1933 onwards. That means since Pius XII. Tassi says there's a double process of storing the photos that's necessary within the archives. Now we're in the archive, which collects all photos in paper, with contact prints. These are necessary prints, without which the client could not find his photos. But also for us, since we have the number of the photos registered, a unique number through which we can retrace the photo negative, scan it and print it as a photo for the client. Rome, the eternal city. Destination for tourists and pilgrims from the entire world, it offers its visitors the possibility of taking with them a very special souvenir, a photo with the Pope. During the audiences with the Pope, both public and private, the Holy See's photography service employs its best photographers to immortalize nearly every instant. 
At the end of the event and after several quality control measures, the photos are made available to the public in two ways. The website of the photography service and for those on site in Rome, the photos can be bought in the service's shop, located just inside the Vatican City. Marta Calderon, one of Catholic News Agency and EWTN News correspondents in Rome, had the opportunity to greet Pope Francis recently. Today, she's going to tell us about the experience from her moment with the Holy Father up until the moment she received the much-awaited photo of the two of them together. Tuve la grata experiencia de ser parte del grupo de periodistas que ingresa a una audiencia privada del Santo Padre. It is a great experience to be part of a group of journalists that have an audience with the Holy Father. In this case, it was after his audience with the president of Macedonia, George Ivanov. This group of journalists is called a pool, and through it you are together with him a couple of minutes before, after walking through a corridor within the Apostolic Palace. You try to find the best spot in order to take a good photo so that you can memorize the specific moments of the encounter after the photo has been published. This was a long encounter, it lasted 35 minutes or more, while the many journalists waited in a room next to the one in which the Holy Father was having the audience. These are moments, well, for me it was the first time I had had the chance to greet the Holy Father, so I was nervous. Because I am Catholic, I love my church, and I love the Holy Father, and for me it is not just a professional opportunity, it is also the chance to meet the successor of Peter and shake hands with the most important person for a Catholic. After this private meeting ended, photographers entered together with the journalists, mostly journalists from Macedonia, and we saw all the details of the exchange of gifts and the greetings between the president and all the people that accompanied the Holy Father. Afterwards, a person in charge of the press came who usually works in the press office of the Vatican and told me I would have the opportunity to greet him. So I stood in front of a group of journalists from Macedonia and I was a little nervous, I must confess. They asked me about my nationality, so I said I'm Peruvian and approached the Pope being led by my left arm. I told the Holy Father that I am a journalist for CNA and EWTN from Peru. It was really only seconds that I had with the Holy Father. The first thing I said was, Your Holiness, my name is Martha Calderon. Then I shook his hand, well, he shook my hand, really. The first reaction that came to mind was to kiss the ring of the fisherman on his finger. Then I was told I would have to step back. It was only seconds, but I think these were unforgettable seconds for me, and the photograph came out with outstanding detail. I will always hold this photo dear, because it will remind me of a unique opportunity. Journalists that were part of the pool then went back to the press office to meet with all those who did not enter the private encounter. Then you have to wait a couple of days, since the meeting happened on Saturday. I went on the website of the Observatory Romano and searched in its picture gallery for the event. It caught my attention that it was easy to find my picture, since the events of the Pope are sorted by month, year, and day by title. So in this case, the Holy Father and the President of Macedonia. With only one click, you can start scrolling through the photos. There were five photos of those few seconds, and I chose three of them in a sequence. The handshake and the kiss. I ordered them at around 1.30 p.m., and they were ready by 5.30 p.m. the same day. They gave me the choice to come back another day, but as it gave me the option to pick them up on the same day, why not? They were given to me in an envelope the size that I chose and protected with a cardboard so they wouldn't be bent. I could immediately share this with family and friends and have a memory of this moment shaking the hands of His Holiness. In my case, I went there to pick it up personally because I am here in Rome. After I found the picture on the website, I went in person to pick them up. In the photo services shop, there are machines where people can look for their photos, carrying out the same process, choosing the photos of a given event, ordering them, and then picking them up later. It is much easier here. As I was saying, I love my church, and I also had the opportunity to participate in a general audience, where it happened that I was in the midst of people, that I had the opportunity to tell the Holy Father I love him. Also there, I had the opportunity to be close to him, and also the people who were close to me from Ecuador told me that they had the chance to get their pictures from the website. It is possible to go to the website and make it possible to get a special souvenir, a unique memory of the blessing that it is to be close to the successor of Peter.
The Roman Empire shaped history. One very important and practical element of making history is to be remembered. To be remembered for the ancient Romans was to be immortalized. Therefore, they went to great pains to make sure that they would be remembered. And what's more lasting than architecture? Squares, palaces, colonnades, and statues are witness to the grandeur of the empire of the Romans. And some buildings had a practical purpose. They recorded history themselves, just like photography does today. The Arch of Constantine, for example, situated in the Forum, was built by the first Roman emperor convert to Christianity, Constantine. It records the battle over Maxentius at the Milvian Bridge in 312. Detailed friezes show moments of the battle and the moment of victory. Similar to this, paintings like this one by Jan Mateko in the Vatican Museums commemorates the moment of victory of the Polish king John Sobieski over the Turks at Vienna. This quality is shared by both media, photography and painting, that is, to commemorate. In the geographical center of Rome, a new exhibition was recently opened, displaying one of the greatest Italian painters of history, Raphael. More precisely, it correlates him to two other masters and their relation in style. The name, Raphael, Barocci, and Parmigianino. Though many similarities exist between creating photos and painting, there is a fundamental difference. Renaissance painting is always an art of construction. It is a form of art that shows an idea that always originates in the head of the author. Photography has something much more immediate in a certain way. It has something much more authentic, a much more natural characteristic in relation to reality. But also she is fruit of the choice of the photographer. It has an immediate character that is neither present in drawing nor in painting of the Renaissance, where every detail and every part is constructed by the artist to create a context in which the figures are inserted. One of these elements is the gaze of the figure, the element that gives name to the exhibit about Raphael, Barocci and Parmigianino. In this exhibition, we show the relation that exists between the three great artists, how they were influenced, how Raphael influences the paintings of Baracci and Parmigianino, and how the gaze of each of them has transformed the way in which we as onlookers judge the art of their time. All three of them have, in their time, received inspirations from antiquity. All three of them use drawing as a mediation between the inspiration that moved their hands and the head and the artistic execution of their work. Raphael is a master painter of the Renaissance and is known for the originality of his work. He even introduced new elements to the craft. Raphael, as the first one, burned the bridges of the 14th century portrait tradition and invented a completely new image with his self-portrait, which stems from the Uffizi collection. Raphael was also an innovator in so far as he involved the viewer into the scenes on display. The crossing of the lines that go beyond the drawing of the painting draws in a certain way the spectator to the inside. One of the drawings is the deposition of Christ after his crucifixion. It is symbolic for the artist's innovations. It is surely inspired by an iconographic scheme present in the ancient art, especially shown in sarcophagi. But in the relation to these ancient models, the innovation of Raphael wins by an innovative position of perspective of the figures shown in full body and three quarters of the body. He manages to make the spectator part of the painting, as if he was present in the scene with his body at the scene of the disposition of Christ's body in this case. This inclusion is very suggestive, since the gazes of the faces of all present figures draw the participation in a magnificent way. The most emblematic character of Raphael are these two elements, the involvement of the context and the involvement of the emotions that we want to explain with this exhibit.
The exhibition features over 70 works and is open until mid-January.